Welcome to Taiwan Kitchen. Today we are in Sudin on today's show. This test, this first time I test like this. Ah, catch it. Wow, look this. Magic noodles. Today we are going to make chicken curry. Very simple, easy recipe that everybody can make it at their place. We are trying to uh, serve the real authentic taste of Pakistan curry, you know. Today I'm going to show you how Irish culture mixed with Taiwan culture. This is not for you to drink, this is for the stew, beef stew. Young and old uh, all go into Irish bars to communicate. In particular in the west of Ireland, uh, it comes from the olden times when there was no electricity in the houses. Okay. People went usually to meet in the local pub. I see. And they talked and they played music, and uh, it was a meeting point in the communication. And that, uh, uh, to this day uh, is the Irish bar. In Ireland uh, you have a couple uh, classical drinks. The most important drink is the Guinness. Guinness was born in Ireland in Dublin yes. uh, and uh, since uh, 1600 and something. Okay. So uh, Guinness is really the centerpiece of Irish drink. We have an hour bar the biggest selection of Irish whiskies. Uh, Taiwan, up to lately, only imported whiskies from Scotland. Yes. And some uh, bigger brands from America, mm -hmm. the bourbons. Yes. But there was no Irish whiskies found. Okay. What's the difference, Ireland's Irish whiskey and Scott whiskey? Uh, Ireland uh, were the first. The monks of Ireland were the first people who distilled whiskey mm -hmm. in the world. So the whiskey distillery started in, uh, in, in Ireland. From Ireland, uh, the system of distilling whiskies went to Scotland. From mm -hmm. Scotland, it went to America and Bourbon was born. Uh, the Irish whiskey is... Uh, whiskey is very dependent on water. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ireland uh, has the Atlantic, and on the other side of the Atlantic, uh, thousands and thousands of kilometers away, is America. So you have a fl fairly clean environment. The weather coming fr from the Atlantic into Ireland mm -hmm. as rain gives you a very good water. Mm -hmm. And uh, this water is being used for, uh, uh, for the whiskies. So the whiskies in Ireland have a very smooth character. I see. The Scottish whiskey is inclined to be more alcohol. Uh, uh, smooth. Uh, so the smoothness of Irish whiskey uh, is, is very famous. So what's the typical Irish dish? The most famous dish I would say is probably Irish stew. So now I'm going to cook Irish typical classic beef stew. We have some ingredients. The beef is from Taiwan. So this spur onion we call zhu tong. This carrots, potato, onion, garlic. Now I'm going to cut the vegetable into the cube size. We're going to cook at the oil first. Get the oil a little bit hot. Put the beef. You always marinate the beef before you put in the pot. Let it cook like one minute each side. You pan fry the beef for a couple of minutes and then you put onion first, some garlic. Let's wait next three to five minutes. Onion come alive. Now next we put carrots and potato in, yes. Also we're gonna put some tomato paste. So now put some leeks in. 
come up. Now the interesting part is come up. So that was surprising. Many, uh, are you ready? Yeah. I'm going to put my first draft Guinness spear in my life. Let's go. Right now, we put here. You're getting employment. For the rest. <laughs> right now, I finish off the beers. I mean Guinness. Right, straight up. Whoa. There, sir. This is not for you to drink. This is for the stew, beef stew. Now I'm going to put all the Guinness into the stew. If you don't have the draft Guinness in the bar, and you can buy the, the kind one from the store. One can should be enough for three to four person. So just keep the slow stew for next 30 minutes. Hmm, roughly 40, mix uh, softener. If you have oven, you can take oven, place in next 35 minutes with 200 degree. When you see it very dried up, it's actually to be more because the beef needs a little bit longer, especially the potato and the carrots. Almost ready. How you can see when it's ready? When you see the liquid ice getting sticky, so it means done. Bernie, so I'll down some uh, beef stew. Thank you very much. So it looks great. Oh. Mm. Try it. Mm. All the beef. Mm. Good. So what's the easy to bring the Irish culture to Taiwan? You try to find common denominators. Uh, the culture, via the culture, uh, and uh, uh, via music. When you feel sad, uh, feel down, when you listen to Irish music, you will get better. So always uh, this music makes you active. The German choice is very kind for, for us to play the music here. Chinese music instruments have some similar like uh, Irish music instrument. For example, uh, Chinese bamboo is similar with team whistle play. So this time I try to ask the Chinese, Chinese music player to play the Irish music and they use Irish style to play the, in their instrument and uh, try, uh, maybe have a different sound but I think uh, they can match each other. Coming into our Irish bar, you don't need to travel to Ireland. You have a little bit of Ireland in our Irish bar. Uh, so, in summary, Australian food is uh, is actually made up of quite a lot of different cultures, as Australia doesn't really have that traditional uh, cuisine itself. So it's very multicultural, but it's always very fresh, very produce-driven, and uh, and usually on the lighter side of things. Uh, the influence of Australian food comes from the uh, the many cultures that make up uh, the Australian. Uh, people. So obviously Australia has a, a strong British influence uh, but we also have a lot of French, German, Italian uh, and Southeast Asian uh, people that have made up uh, Australia uh, to what it is now. So the food itself is very vibrant and very uh, uh, diverse I would say um, but one thing that does tie it together is usually that the ingredients that we're using in Australia are very uniquely Australian and uh, whether that be the indigenous ingredients or the introduced uh, ingredients they're still very Australian. And, uh, Australia's most uh, popular dish is not so uh, of an Australian dish but it, we've definitely made it our own in a way is the uh, salt and pepper calamari um, so very sort of Chinese influenced dish but uh, in Australia, the quality of the squid that we get and the, the calamari that we get, sorry, and it's the one dish that you will find in every restaurant, every pub, every fish and chip shop, 
uh, on almost every single menu in a cafe uh, around Australia. So, and usually people will judge the quality of a restaurant off their salt and pepper calamari. So definitely it's a very Australian dish. difference in taste is there a difference in taste between Japanese curry and Indian curry we're going to find out chicken masala has grown to become the number one dish in the UK what we have here is an actual Indian shop where you can buy lots of spices and this is not in England this is in and it's not in India either it's in Taipei what we have here are all the basic ingredients that you'll need for making your own curry I was born and brought up in India Oh, Taiwanese have started to like more Indian curries. Before, in the starting, they used to like uh, the Taiwanese curry, uh, I mean to say Taiwanese or Japanese curry. So when they started uh, eating uh, Indian curry, they started to like Indian curry more because of the flavor. You know, Japanese curry is mostly like they are, they are like sweet in flavor and like uh, not, not very spicy. The Indian curries is more of like uh, spices, aromatic spices. What do you think is a real curry? There are many versions, but uh, the most authentic is the Indian curry, like uh, which started from India and like it spread all around the world. Each country have their own version of curries. Looking here, there are so many ingredients. There's so many spices. Where would I start? Simple curry. You can just uh, select one cumin, coriander, turmeric, or chili powder. So, so that those are those are the main main ingredient to make a Indian curry. Rice is very essential in Chinese cooking, but especially essential too in Indian cooking. What what is the rice about in India? What what's the difference? Well, there here? are many uh, kind of rice in India. Like uh, most of the rice eating uh, places in India is towards the uh, Bengal and the uh, southern part of India. They eat rice more. And what's the difference is in the texture? Basmati is usually the long grain rice, which is they use it for make biryanis and any aromatic rice. Yeah. Or you can make a white rice to accompany with the curries. What happens if I have like Chinese rice with my curry, uh, with my Indian so curry? You can do that also. But uh, mostly they want to go for healthy options. So this biryani, uh, this biryani rice or basmati rice is very healthy. Apart from being healthier, is it tastier? Does it really yeah, work the better? The flavor is more aromatic okay. than the regular rice. Out of wonder, I've seen there's lemongrass here and I saw that in the freezer as well. But lemongrass yeah. is for Thai curry, right? Not yes. Indian curries, is that uh, right? No. no, mostly it's used for Thai curries. Yeah, yeah. Indian curries, maybe some, some people want to use, most want to do some fusions. In India, like they have many kind of fusion uh, dishes. Like they, they can have like uh, something like uh, curry pasta. <laughs> they have uh, something like a uh, pizza with curry flavor, those things, or something like uh, uh, Thai, Thai and Indian curries, like uh, fusions kind of things. Cause um, this is not a Taiwanese cuisine. Do you think do you think it's a risky project having an actual Indian only based curry like spice shop? Is it, do you think it, this will, do you think you'll have to change and modify to Taiwanese tastes in the future by having Japanese curry here? Or do you think this, this kind of like Indian curry will continue to grow? I think so the Indian curry will continue to grow because so day and day Taiwanese like more of Indian flavors and going for less of Japanese flavors. Oh, really? Because they say like uh, Japanese curry, when they eat Japanese curry, it's too sweet. They don't like it very sweet type of curries. They wanted something which have uh, more spice flavor, more little spice and kind of uh, spices kind of flavor, type of, those type of curries. So you see the 
you see Taiwanese moving from Japanese curry yeah. to Indian uh, curry. Uh, most of the uh, customer who comes here, they used to say they used to have Japanese curry before, but they don't like the sweet taste of the curries. So when they had it in the restaurants, they they felt like the Indian curry is more healthy than the Japanese curries. Tell me, when you were in India, did you ever have was Japanese curry ever in India? No, I never seen any Japanese curries in India. How did you feel when you tasted your first Japanese curry in Taiwan? Like uh, it was kind of, oh, my mood went off. Okay, so, so if you were going to give any advice to Taiwanese who have never tried an Indian curry, what would you say to them? I would say try Indian, uh, Indian spices, Indian curries. They are more healthy than the Japanese curries. This is an Indian snack that I'm going to introduce to you. This is actually an Indian naan type of kebab. And what's good about it is that you can eat it everywhere you go and you can eat it at any time. Now, this has become more, recently, it's become more and more popular, especially in Taiwan. This is Pakistani food, you know, I mean, Taiwanese people like curry. And uh, we are trying to uh, serve the real authentic taste of Pakistan curry, you know. It's uh, actually the real curry is the combination of vegetable and a lot of spices. And we are even making our own spices. We are grinding our own spices. It's not just like we are buying, uh, you know, the ready-made uh, spices and just cooking. So kebabs are many kinds of kebabs, like yeah. uh, from Turkish kebabs or uh, from Middle East or from Pakistan or even in India, you know. So I think it's just, it depends on how you cook. Cooking is an art. It's just like, it's my patient. I like cooking. The dough of roti and chapati is very, very simple. It's just uh, three ingredients, flour, water, and a little bit of salt, and a little bit of oil. Everything is handmade. And how do you heat it up? I mean, is that, what is that, an upside down frying pan? Yeah, it's a wok. Well, we are cooking on, on the back That's side of the wok. This is the process of making the naan kebab. So you're, so you're popping it in flour, stretching it out here. It's like making a pizza, isn't it? Popping it on the dome. Oh, I wouldn't want to put my hand on that. <laughs> oh. This is actually much better than a normal wrap that I'd have. Delicious! Tantalizing and chewy. That cute, cute feeling. I like that. And now let's go to an authentic Indian curry house. It's called Tandoor. Tandoor Indian restaurant. And how long has it been going for? It's like um, uh, more than 31 years now. Well. Oh really? Yeah. Compared to Japanese curry, mm -hmm. this looks nothing like it. This is absolutely, it's completely different. It's Indian, that's why. What is the difference then between a Japanese curry, like from your view? I don't find like authenticity. Yeah, like, you know, Indian has like different spices. They use like all sort of uh, spices. If you eat their food, you can feel like the same taste in the other one. If I make the dal, if I make the aloo gobi, so you will find a different taste in it. Today we are going to make chicken curry, a very simple, easy recipe that everybody can make it at their place. We need chicken. Cumin seeds, coriander powder, garam masala, turmeric powder, red chili, bay leaf cinnamon stick, salt, red chili powder, green chili, fresh coriander, chopped uh, uh, ginger, chopped garlic, and butter. You're using a lot of fresh spices here. Why, why is that important? Because if we use a fresh spices, it gives you fresh aroma. Fresh, you know, if you put a fresh uh, spice, it gives give you fresh aroma. If you use the old one, they don't have aroma, no taste. This is the very easiest way. You can make it chicken in like 20-30 minutes, easy. And prep time probably 
10 minutes. So you have to buy a chicken. Then you need to chop your onion and your tomato, ginger and garlic and other spices. That's it. What else do you need? <laughs> First, we're going to add some oil. While it's heating up, what you can do, you can put some bay leaves. Then your cardamom, your cinnamon stick and peppercorn with it. Then after you can add some cumin seed. Okay. So you can see your oil is already heat up now. So it's a yeah, time. Yeah. yeah, so it's time to add some onion in it. You can see the onion color is changing now. So just need to wait for 20-30 seconds. Then you need to add some garlic. Yeah. And you can add some chopped ginger and you can see turning golden brown now so we need to put turmeric powder uh, turmeric has lots of you know benefits you know it's quite healthy in India every person use the turmeric in their food it gives you flavor it gives you healthy benefits and gives you color also you can see the oil color now is changing yeah fresh turmeric you can't use it because uh, fresh turmeric you have to dry them and then you need to make a powder in in india some places they use like fresh uh, turmeric but i'm from northern part so we don't use uh, like fresh turmeric we use it like this way now it's time to add some tomato oh, nice. chopped tomato we need to put salt to taste so now you can add some garam masala over here so one teaspoon or like one and a half teaspoon of garam masala so now we need to add some coriander powder over here almost two teaspoon of coriander powder at this stage what you can do if you want to put some water you can put some water now we are putting some red chili powder to give nice color so we need to mix them well you can see it's turning to red now you can put some more water here at this stage you can put some green chili you know if you want spicy you can put more chili if you want less spicy then put less chili and what's the difference between using a green chili and a red chili yeah good question when you put fresh green chili it gives you fresh taste it's like you know very strong strong taste and it doesn't give you color that's why we use powder. So green chili for the little spicy and freshness. So you can see there's no tomato, no onion. You can't see it's like a becoming paste now. Yeah. So it's, it's time to add chicken. So we can put some chicken here. You can use all type of chicken, but we use uh, chicken legs over here. Legs. Yeah, you can use uh, boneless. You can use with the bones. What I use with the bones want to give you more flavor so now we need to see oh wow yeah it's becoming thicker now at this stage we need to add some butter chicken so yes yeah. so this is the curry you cook yes is that basmati rice? yes these are the basmati rice you but can even see even the rice has a smell that you can't i don't smell in with normal like taiwanese rice i Good. don't get that yeah yeah because these are the special rice from india not from here why don't you just use chinese rice because basmati rice if you go to india so this is the basmati rice you can see it has a different taste and aroma Feel the difference completely different the texture is it's more chewy, but it's quite, I feel it's quite, um, quite hard, a bit harder as well. Yeah. And I, I don't know why, but I like it a lot more than the rice I normally have. If I go to a Japanese curry store, it doesn't taste anything like that. No, because they don't use basmati rice. They oh. do the jasmine, uh, the different rices. Tell me about your naan bread. How did you make it? We make it in a tandoor. It, it has a, like a fine flour. So, you know, we, we, we make a dough, then we put it and then we make it and we put some little bit butter to give it like more richness crunchy quite hard but buttery smooth 
It's got everything I like about it. And try with the chicken now. With the oh wow, this is what you cooked. Tiny bit of rice. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. I've never had a curry like that even in England. Let me tell you, as the time goes by, every second that goes by, a new spice is popping up in my in my mouth. I mean, I don't know what it is, it's like it's like some popping stuff, some popping feeling. This is this is too good to be true. Yeah, different. It's completely different. It's like, not even different. It's like a hundred differences in one. You just don't find that anywhere else. I, I haven't found that since I've come to Taiwan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I've been to some Indian restaurants uh -huh. and they all seem to focus on Taiwan tastes and keep everything uh, like at one type of taste, not such an array of flavors in one. Yeah. This is brilliant. This uh, is absolutely brilliant. That's why we are in the market for the last 31 years. Uh, there was like a myth, Taiwanese people don't like Indian food, they don't like like a buttery and other type of spicy food. But I'm here since uh, six months and people like Indian food and they eat like this kind of stuff. That's why we are making. And so you haven't adapted anything to the Taiwanese tastes? We are serving as it is, like a pure Indian food. I'm going to be talking to Su Lin, who's actually been working. How long have you been working here for? 32 years. How come you liked Indian food? Because over 30 years ago, that must have been very different in Taiwan. Like, I think no one in Taiwan, uh, even people in Taiwan now have no idea about Indian food. No, because my father is cook. We, before he owned one small restaurant and he always cooked different food for us. What did he cook like different? Like, like a ta Taiwanese food or Japanese food. So we only use small one. We already used to so many kind of countries food. <laughs> So I like, you uh, know, more flavor. And how about now? Do you still eat like food in Taiwan, Taiwanese food now? Yeah. You still do? But less. What's the difference in the spice between like Taiwanese food and with Indian food? No, because Taiwanese food, the spicy means it's spicy, means it's used chili. But the Indian chili, that means we use so many kind of flavors, masala. So maybe you will feel very spicy, but only in your tongue. Actually, it's not go to your through your and uh, your stomach, but you still feel its flavor. But Taiwanese, they don't understand because the chili. Because in the Taiwanese, if we, if we say this food is chili, that means chili because use they are make cooking by the chili. Maybe it's red chili, maybe it's chili, green chili, but it's chili. If your best Taiwanese friends are going for a Japanese curry and they've never tried this, what would you tell them? I say you must you know challenge your tongue because we have so many flavor. Then he will open your tongue and suck those spice in your mouth. What do you think of Japanese curry? Because in Taiwanese, we used to the Japanese curry because of that so many history problem. But Japanese curry for me is only the sweet, not so many masala. And his ticket is used the potato and the so many like a fruit, like a, like apple, everything. Not a, so many masala. So for me, the not, not so like because of the no flavor. I need to say, if you haven't tasted this curry or have, haven't had any authentic Indian curry, then you've really missed out. I mean, you really, I would even like to go far, to as far to say that you will have no idea what real curry is. You really got to get down and go to one of these places and try it out. Or get the ingredients and try it yourself at home. Voila! Today, I'm at Shidin Noodle Factory in the middle of uh, the mountain in Shidin area. The noodles, they need water and flour. And most important is salt. So if I salt enough the figure, you can make the stretch with the noodles. And all plus the old traditional way, handmade. So it take 12 hours to make one patch of noodles. It's the, doing the pull and relax noodles. Mix stretching, resting, and even less 
I think the noodle is longer. If you hear, you will smell this fantastic smell. Next to it. Look at the noodles. There's never even one thing go on to break. This look like a silk. Wow, wonderful. This place is be open for 25 years. Only do one particular thing. This handmade noodles. This is green tea noodles. Green tea flavor noodles. This is very interesting. So someone, if it never had green tea before, you can try the noodles with the green tea flavor. That's uh, wow. That's very interesting. Sansa is the most key to make the texture for the noodles. So you won't feel any same with others without the Sansa to dry the noodles because the sun and air is the nature from the earth. This is uh, the location. That's why if you build the factory inside the mountain, so you get fresh air for a nice sunshine, then you less pollution from the city. Then that's why a lot of organic shops buy his products selling fast in the city. Now I can test the noodles. So later on the noodles will come all the way from the tube. Yes, and then use Kung Fu Master chopstick skills, right? If you don't know how to use chopstick, I will teach you guys in next episode, right? So now, the two tubes come running water, you should fast, okay? And uh, here is homemade sauce. Okay, so this is chili. The people here, if you want extra space, this is uh, extra by yourself, right? All right, now come up. Ah, catch it. Wow, look this. Magic noodles. Mmm. Very nice. Second part coming. Wow. Ah, no. This, uh, this test, this first time I test like this. This noodles, I never tried anything like this. Even in China? No. I never tried this before. This is a little bit different. You can smell the still flower in there. So these noodles we made from this morning, five o'clock, the so first batch. Okay. So that's why this has different. And also very important key is the water this is from the mountain water. You know, I just ask the boss. When you buy the noodles back home, you only cook 50 seconds after boiling the water. Right? Make sure the water was boiled, you put noodles in 50 seconds. And then you take out, plunge it, then. So also you can do, the fast way is, you get some nice iced steel water next to the bowl. So after 50 seconds, straight away, Get the noodles off, plant it. No, oh, another one coming. Come on, stop it. Ah, oh, no, come on. This is green tea. Green tea. Oh, green tea. Right. So this is a typical Taiwanese habit during the summer. So when during the summer, because the temperature very hot, so most like 35 plus, then it's too hot to eat hot noodles. So now they have a sesame paste dressing, some cucumber, some noodles on top with the uh, seaweed and some post eggs. So what we're gonna eat, you mix up with noodles, everything. This liang mian is very important during the summer for people who live in Taiwan. And also it's typical this during the hot weather. All right, let's try. Mm. Wonderful. The sauce was uh, excellent. 
cucumber, refreshness, and seaweed, extra some crunches. Mm -hmm. This chili base is hot and uh, also homemade. So who cook the noodles actually for the kitchen? So you need to use the meat. Okay, it's like a family member who cook the noodles in the back of the kitchen. And uh, you know, this is like old grandma style. Well, I'm going to cook. 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 Thanks for watching. See you next time.